What's going on guys and welcome back to WWE Network and Chill where I Graham Jesus and Matthews break down all the original content and watch on the WWE Network and today we're talking the November 21st 2020 edition of Talking Smack which arguably may have been one of if not the best episode of the show so far since its resurrection of sorts back in August. This was seriously a stellar show like I cannot praise the show enough I cannot stress that enough. This was a fantastic episode. It was once again hosted by Kayla Braxton and Paul Heyman. Obviously, all sites are set on Survivor Series, and that's what a lot of this episode was about. We had the Street Profits on talking about New Day. We had Bailey on also being interrupted by Natalia, which I did not expect to enjoy as much as I did. I like Bailey. Natalia, as you guys probably know by this point, does absolutely nothing for me. That was very good. We had Daniel Bryan on. Again, not Survivor Series related. But even what he had to say was fantastic. And I'll get to that momentarily. But this was a really, really good episode. Definitely up there. Again, if not surpassing those early episodes back in August for the interactions between Miz and Big E. So Kayla's attempting to build up the Survivor Series card, run down the list of matches, blah, blah, blah. Like Raw Talk ran down the entire card for the pay-per-view. Talking Smack didn't need to do that. You would expect that actually to happen Talking Smack and not Raw Talk, just because Talking Smack is a day before the pay-per-view, not six days. Raw Talk is just such a fucking bore most weeks. Our truth is funny, but, like, he and Charlie have literally no chemistry. It's like, it feels like she's trying to make it a thing for them to have chemistry, and it just doesn't work. It just feels forced. I mean, I never thought Heyman and Braxton would be an amazing pairing, but I just like their chemistry and their dynamics so much more. Heyman can be a little over the top sometimes, um, but he clearly is trying to make her crack, and it just makes for great TV. She composes herself very well. Kayla's come a long way since she first came into the company years ago. Um, in this host role, she ain't no, she's no Renee Young, but she's as good as it's going to get And for this company as far as this stuff is concerned. And Heyman is also very good, so they were great on this episode. Heyman says right off the fucking bat, Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre, the main event for Sunday's pay-per-view, is not, not... And it pisses him off he even has to say this. It is not a champion versus champion match. Rather, it is a champion versus title holder match. Roman Reigns is a champion. McIntyre, rather, is a placeholder, he says. Roman Reigns was groomed to be champion. McIntyre, he said he's a babysitter for a belt. Which I thought was great. And he, he kind of made it sound like he shouldn't be saying that. I'm like, oh, what's so bad about that? Then I just realized, oh, you're not supposed to say belt on TV. So that's probably, what, that, that's probably what he meant by that when he prefaced it by saying, oh, I probably shouldn't be saying this. But I'm not even saying that's true. McIntyre's been a great champion, but I just thought that was a great line. So they quickly recap Rollins and Murphy. Less said about that whole bullshit, the better. It was a great match. I'm just very happy that whole storyline is over. So I'm glad that we didn't get the whole Murphy. <laughs> Remember last week, Mysterio? The whole Mysterio family was on the show with Murphy. It just looked bizarre. Just so weird with this like 32-year-old man having his armor on this 19-year-old girl. It was just weird. So thankfully, they don't spend a lot of time talking about that. Um, Heyman does expect Jay to become a cross-branded superstar at Survivor Series by participating in the men's elimination match. And if he doesn't, there might be something to be said about that. Kind of warning saying if Jay doesn't get the job done on Sunday, Roman might have something in mind for Jay. So that's not good. But the Prophets are the first guest on the show. And listen, I love the Prophets. I feel like, I don't know how many times they've been on Talking Smack. Maybe I'm just thinking of Raw Talk. But they have been on Talking Smack at least once. Definitely Raw Talk a few times. They were just... As great and as entertaining as they are, sometimes they don't keep it serious, and they're just all over the fucking place with what they have to say. And they don't really... They, they just say a lot without saying much at all. That was not the case here. I thought they were great here. One of the first things they said was, you're welcome to the New Day. Because they won that match last night, that eight-man tag team match. They won that match, and New Day never said thanks. So they're just going to say you're welcome. They feel like the New Day have underestimated them. And that they will continue, 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 as Montez Ford said, to do what they've been doing so far. And that they, they promised to win at Survivor Series. They were great here. You know, short, sweet, straight to the point. Entertaining, but still effective. And Heyman was great here, too, and kind of hyping them up. So they then welcome on Bailey, And they bring up how Bailey did not have to qualify. But, of course, she says exactly what we were all thinking. And that she qualified for Team SmackDown. 
through her accomplishments. She has been SmackDown Women's Champion, essentially, for over 500 days. Not consecutively, again, between two different reigns, but that's a long time. For what she's accomplished on the show in the last year and a half, since May of 2020, April of 2000, or 2019, rather, that is enough to earn her a spot on the, uh, on the team. I agree. I still think she should have qualified formally, a lot like everyone else, if not just name her captain outright, but whatever, it's not that big of a deal. So she calls herself the captain, even though she just joined the team on Friday. Natalia takes exception to that, saying that she did nothing to earn that spot. And Bailey's like, nope, you're a liar, blah, blah, blah. Natalia says, as she has said many times before, that she is the winningest women's wrestler in WWE history and that she has been in more women's elimination matches than anyone in WWE history, which is probably accurate. It's probably accurate. I know she actually won, I think she won her first Divas Championship at Survivor Series a decade ago from when this episode aired. I think that was 10 years ago today, um, if I'm not mistaken. So she has had success at Survivor Series. Um, I know she participated in a handful of those women's elimination matches over the years. I don't know how many she's actually won, but she's been in a bunch. So, Bailey and Natalia eventually kind of get back on the same page because they have to come Survivor Series. And Bailey was just tremendous here. She goes, she's the boat, so she can sail everywhere. And it was kind of like a a line that was just kind of set under the radar that wasn't given a lot of attention. And I just fucking laughed at that. The whole boat thing is so dumb. Oh, the best of all time. It's a dumb nickname. Even Goat is a little dumb, but Boat is just straight up stupid. So, when Bailey said that, I thought that was hilarious. And then Natalia called Paul Heyman handsome a bunch of times. That was a little fucking weird. And then Bailey said that she blocked two paws on Instagram. The whole interaction here I thought was great. Again, I don't give two shits about Natalia, but even she was not only tolerable here, but what she had to say made sense. I very much you could tell that she Bailey cracked at one point, Natalia cracked at one point. They were making each other laugh that much because it was just great back and forth. It was great verbiage. Very good stuff here. So the final guest on the show is Daniel Bryan. And today, I mean, obviously this was filmed yesterday, but it went live on November 21st, so they pretend like it's November 21st when they're filming this. I don't know why they just don't put it on the network right after SmackDown. I mean, seriously, I know 205 Live airs, but who the fuck watches 205 Live Live anyway? You know what I mean? Like, just put, either put 205 Live on a different night. I mean, even put 205 Live on first thing Saturday morning. I think that would make more sense. To have Talking Smack come out the next day, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. The, one of the beauties of Talking Smack the first time years ago was that it aired right after SmackDown. It aired 205 Live after the fucking fact. It's pre-taped anyway, so who cares? I feel like that might change at some point. So, Daniel Bryan's here on the show wishing his wife, Brie Bella, as well as Nikki, his uh, sister-in-law, a very happy birthday because it was their birthday. It's their birthday today, actually, November 21st. He recalls his <laughs> amazing wrap-off with the Usos which I think was the June 27, 2017 episode, and the only reason why I know the date, you're probably thinking, how the hell do you know that? I think that was the same episode that Kevin Owens was on, and Kevin Owens was fucking hilarious. Definitely one of my favorite episodes of the show ever. And it was just really, really funny, and I think the wrap-off was on that same episode. They called them, like, Sweet Beats or something, when Brian was still the SmackDown GM, the Usos called them Sweet Beats or whatever. And I'm pretty sure it was that episode because that was right before they had the wrap off the week later with the new day. So he recalled that and remembers his history with Jay. And he calls Jay really, really talented. That everyone was really happy for Jay coming off his various wins in recent months, all of his big wins. But he said it was strange. He said it was strange how he abruptly just stopped treating everyone else with respect. And he said he thought it was a Heyman issue, but it might be a Roman Reigns issue. But that wasn't the point of what he's trying to say here. He says that he beat Jay with the perfect small package on SmackDown. He has a big thing about small packages. He did this a couple of years ago. He would call himself, maybe it was on the JBL and Cole show or something, but it was somewhere where, maybe it was during Team Hell No. I, I don't remember exactly, but he called himself Mr. Small Package. And obviously it's it was done as a joke, but he can actually do a pretty good small package, but it's, it's like a dick joke, but it's like done in a way where it's funny and it's not like hitting you over the head with it. It's just done very, very well. It's been a running gag with him for years, so I thought that was great. So I, I completely forgot, yes, he did beat Jey Uso with a small package on SmackDown, but he poses the question to Kayla, do you think I'm satisfied after all the time that I missed, which was only three weeks, but being unable to put my daughter on the bus, being unable to kiss my beautiful wife, blah, 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 whatever he said. Do you think I'm satisfied with the fact that they put me on the shelf and I only beat him with a small package? Kayla says no, and he says, all right, I'll let that speak for itself, and he just walks off. So clearly, he still has unfinished business 
with Roman Reigns, which is what I thought. And that's the feud, that's the direction they're headed in, which is amazing. But then he also had the unfinished business that they alluded to on SmackDown with him and Sami Zayn. So I have no idea what the fuck is going on right now. Either way, Daniel Bryan is headed for a title picture. I don't know if it's the IC or the Universal, but either way, he's headed for a title picture, and I'm very excited about that. Bryan here was just amazing. The guy was on another level. The guy was just awesome. So I really, really love this promo here from him. He was serious. He was entertaining at the beginning. He's likable. Romantic at the very beginning, wishing his wife a happy birthday. This was phenomenal and a great way to close off a great talking smack. Again, Brian was wonderful. Natalia and Bailey exceeded my expectations with their exchange. And even the Profits were also very, very good. And Kayla and Heyman continue to be a very good pairing on this show. I do miss Xavier. I do miss Miz. Miz is on Raw now, so he can't host anyway. Xavier's on Raw now, so he can't host either. Sami Zayn was a great co-host. But I think Heyman has kind of filled in the void very well in recent weeks. And this was a phenomenal talking smack. Again, cannot recommend this episode enough right now on the WWE Network. You can check out all my other talking smack reviews since the show was relaunched a couple of months ago over the summer. You can check out all those other reviews right here on the channel in the description box down below in the playlist entitled Talking Smack Reviews right here on WWE Network and chill. You can like this video. I, I encourage you to do so, of course. Drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Of course, we have SmackDown audio reviews, Talking Smack reviews every single Saturday. Throughout the week, we have Raw Talk reviews. We break down all the new network content, Uncool with Alexa Bliss, um, the Brothers of Destruction documentary, WWE Untold, Chronicle, Broken Skull Sessions, WWE Break It Down, and so much more. And that's in addition to all the other stuff you get by subscribing to the channel. Weekly Q&As on Wednesdays. Excerpts from my podcast, Wrestle Rant Radio, which includes pay-per-view predictions and stuff like that. Miscellaneous content. You get exclusive interviews every single week with the superstars of NXT, WWE, Raw, SmackDown, and other companies as well. Both, you know, old and new interviews. We just had Sasha Banks on the channel yesterday. That was a great conversation. So again, if you're not already subscribed, what the hell are you waiting for? Please do so now. I would strongly appreciate it, strongly recommend it as well. So enjoy Survivor Series tomorrow night, guys. Have a great one. I'm Graham Jason Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.